Hey everybody, this is Mitch with uh, XRM Coaches. Uh, today I thought I would uh, give you a quick overview of my uh, snapshot documentation tool for Dynamics CRM and Dynamics 365. So this is just going to cover the basic functionality. Then I'll have other videos that are based on um, exact uh, function points of the application. So this is a Windows application as you can probably tell here and very simply when you start out you need to connect to CRM and you do that by pushing the connect to CRM button. Um, it supports a, pretty much any um, variety of uh, dynamics that you can uh, currently work with from uh, on-premises to online. Uh, today we're going to be working with the online version so I'm going to choose a, uh, CRM online via uh, Office 365. Now what it will do behind the scenes is put together uh, the connection mechanism to connect to whatever uh, server you've selected and this uh, set of information will uh, change depending on what you selected. So for instance, if I go back to on-premises, you will notice I don't have a data center, I do have a discovery server and a domain. When I go to uh, Office 365, I don't have any of that stuff because uh, it's not necessary. Um, all of the data centers that we currently have are supported. Everything from uh, North America down through the Microsoft Cloud Germany, etc. So all the data centers represented and it will actually take care of determining, as you can see here in this uh, field, it will pick the um, uh, discovery server that it knows you need for that specific uh, data center or geolocation. So all you have to do is select where you are, where your data is, more specifically, and enter an account name and a password. And again, everything else is taken care of. So if you cannot enter something, it will be uh, disabled. Like, for, for instance, um, we can only connect via HTTPS to uh, CRM Online or Dynamics 365 Online. So that's automatically checked and disabled so you can't accidentally undo it. So once the data is in, uh, your uh, connection information is entered, just click the Connect button. And what it will do is it will go out and pull out a list of available organizations that this user has available to it. So if you only have one, you're only going to see one. Um, but I have a bunch of test organizations here. And I'm just going to pick one and then click Select Organization. And what it will do is it will actually connect to the organization, uh, verify a few security things, and then display the main interface. OK, now we're um, at the main interface here. So really all you have to do is select the types of reports you want just through a series of checkboxes and then specify your output folder so this is where the file is actually going to be uh, created so um, I've tried to break down the the layout of the options as close to the user interface as possible so we have customizations administration business management security email configuration analysis and then some developer tool things I just kind of threw in for giggles so basically anything you don't want, just uncheck it. And then um, anything that you um, uh, want, you put a check on it, of course. There are some things that are unchecked by default because they either generate a lot of data or they're not commonly used. So what I've done here is things that I have seen people use, myself included, over time on a frequent basis, they're, they're turned on by default. But everything else is not. So um, as simple as uh, just checking the main box and then unchecking things you don't want or what you do want. So just your standard uh, way of window working with Windows. Um, there's two checkboxes at the top under the report. So the first is open the folder after generation. So what will happen is it will create a folder that is date and time stamped with the, the current runtime when you started the process. And all of the files and stuff will be um, named according to that. We'll cover that in a different video later on. So if you check that, when it gets through with the uh, report generation process, it will actually open up a Windows Explorer pointing to that folder system so you can see the files that were generated. The pack and go option is for either 
consultants or maybe you need an archive or whatever and what it will do is it will actually zip up the entire folder structure that's being generated into a single zip file so that you can either store it uh, like I mentioned in archive or send it to your consultant or if you are a consultant send it to your other partners or whatever it might be so this is just a quick time saver to keep you from having to go into the folder system and do it yourself so once you have everything ready to go um, just to, uh, and the folder, uh, the report folder, export folder is specified, just uh, click the create button. And then over here in the processing log, it will go through and show you what it's working on. So this is multi-threaded. So if you see things start showing up out of order, like if there's a list of things, especially like when you get into security roles, they're, they're numbered uh, so, you, so you know which one you're on. You will see things show up out of order. That's strictly because the uh, the threads are not being executed uh, synchronously, so they're or they're being asynchronous, so they're actually running all at the same time. So uh, don't be alarmed by that if you see that. But what will happen here is it will go through the different steps and then pull out the data that is necessary for the creation of the report that you requested. And then what will happen is. Um, sometimes you'll see things over in the processing log like well I didn't ask for the sitemap well you didn't ask for the sitemap but I need the sitemap to produce a specific report that you requested so sometimes you'll see things on the right hand side in the processing log that you didn't specifically request but the system needs um, needs that information to continue so most of this is really quick to extract um, the um, metadata at the very top is the most um, time-consuming because it, uh, it uh, just takes a long time to get. Um, the way that, that, that this uh, application had to be designed is due to the, the timeouts that you can encounter with different things. Um, I, I get things in small chunks. So, for instance, I get the entity metadata all in one chunk. But then, uh, so that's the overall, like here's the list of entities, etc. But the each individual uh, entity itself so the metadata for the account and the contact etc I have to go and get those one at a time because if I requested everything at once it would actually time out on me so uh, and that would you know basically just produce an error so I had to make some uh, trade-offs between performance and um, uh, actual functionality so hopefully it doesn't impact you too badly but uh, mostly as you can see it's actually pretty quick here so this is hitting a, a standard uh, uh, Dynamics 365 uh, online instance and um, the whole thing is uh, kind of going before you there and this is with the default options so you see I really didn't change anything so anyway so what will happen is after you get done and again we push that uh, checkbox for show the folder um, we now have our folder system here let me move that over sorry about that So here's our folder system and here's a, a textual representation of the processing log that you saw on the right hand side and then has some other statistical information in it. And in another video we'll go through all of these folders and what to look for, how you read it, stuff like that. But that is really and truly it. So it's just a matter of selecting your options, uh, uh, making sure your output folder is specified, and then uh, basically clicking the create button and walking away and getting a cup of coffee. So as you see here, this took, um, let's see, it's, it ended at 1905. It started in 1902. So it did the whole organization. And this doesn't have much in it. Um, so it did it in, in about three minutes, uh, three or four minutes here. So that's, that's uh, kind of average. Usually it's somewhere between five and 10, depending on your complexity. More complex organizations, more data, of course, will take longer. So that's it. So if you have any questions, just uh, drop me an email. Thanks.